Hello everybody, welcome to number 27. I'm Jack and today I am doing what is possibly a bit of a, a weird comparison at first glance. So a big luxury limo from a mass market manufacturer that also makes the Golf and the Polo compared to a sporty coupe from Bentley. Does seem weird until you realize that underneath these cars are essentially the same. The big dividing line between the Phaeton and the GT is price. Now these started, the Phaetons, at about £70,000 and then with options you could get up to about £80,000, perhaps even more. The GTs on the other hand, £120,000 starting price and with a few options you could easily get up to £150,000 or more. So essentially the Phaeton is half the price of the Bentley. Can the GT justify this with what I already expect to be a more opulent interior, a better driving experience, perhaps the aesthetics? So firstly, some of the basic mechanical differences between the two. They are both W12s, but this produces 550 horsepower, this 450. Where's the difference? Where this is a twin turbo, that's naturally aspirated. The bodywork on this is aluminium. On the Phaeton, it's mainly steel, although it does have aluminium doors and bizarrely, but I quite like it, it's got plastic wings, so they don't rust, which is always a bit of a plus. The other sort of mechanical thing that splits them apart is the gearbox. It's not a big thing, but that is a five-speeder and this is a six-speed. Because this is mainly steel-bodied, it does weigh 100 to 150 kilograms more than the GT, so two and a half tonnes, 2350 is the official weight for this. I'm not sure how accurate it is. And the Phaeton is a fair bit longer. So the standard Phaeton, this is a long wheelbase, but the standard one is already slightly longer than the GT. The next obvious area we have to discuss is looks. Now the Phaeton was criticized at the time as looking just like a big Passat. I disagree. I've always liked these. I mean, it is a little bit understated, but it does have presence, it does have elegance, it's really well proportioned, and I think that VW did a great job. Obviously, that badge is an issue, and I think has always hindered this car, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But looks-wise, I think they really did as well as they could. The Bentley itself has some really nice retro touches. I would say it's not as well balanced as a design. So if you see it from some angles, side on in particular, it looks great and it has hints of those curves of the earlier Bentleys. But then you see it from some three quarter angles, those front lights I don't think look quite right. But on the whole, still a very nice design and it definitely does look premium. I'd say more premium than this, although they are very different cars. When this was first launched, one of the things that they said that wasn't quite up to scratch compared to the competition from, BMW from Mercedes was the interior wasn't quite good enough. I think at first glance it looks quite it looks quite nice. One of the things that sort of I, I think is that if these materials were darker, like a, a black rather than these grey plastics, it would immediately lift it a little bit. Now there were some options, and Rob incredibly has the original dealer suitcase, which shows you all the different sort of packs and things that you could pick for the car. So when you're at the dealer, they get this lovely case with all the different options. You can see there things that you put in. So you would get here, this is the headliner and you can have, oh, <laughs> you can have various sort of different options there, Alcantara, different colors, cloth and so on. Then you'd get uh, the color palette, then the um, upper dash color there as well, which again, you can pick various. There's not that much to pick. There's sort of shades of blue, all shades of grey, then the wooden inlay which you can put in, the lower dash, then the uh, seat, leather colour, inlays and carpeting. Ultimately though I agree some of the plastics here aren't quite of the best quality. They have some quite interesting touches here, for example these cup holders, um, although they're a bit iffy to use, they're, they're quite cool. Also I absolutely love that the vents sort of spin up and open up when you start the car. There you go, so that's that's pretty cool. There's a lot of familiarity here, we'll see in a moment when I'm in the Bentley, with the graphics of the uh, of the display. I don't have the original infotainment, but they look very similar in terms of the way the buttons are laid out. The interior, 
I'd say functional, definitely has elements of luxury in it. The wood trim is quite nice. Maybe they could have tried a little bit harder with that. In the Bentley now, and does this feel like double the interior? Quite frankly, I do have to say when it comes to the interior, probably yes. This does feel much more special. Obviously this has leather trim all over the dash, um, but the shaping of it, the way it all looks, it does feel like you're in a really top end car. The Phaeton does feel much more mass produced in comparison. But some of the similarities, these are identical for example, the way the cubby hole is made is pretty similar. Um, but there's enough here to differentiate it. But the engine sounds similar, if perhaps a little bit more muted. Seat, first acquaintance, really comfortable and uh, holds you in a little bit better than the Bentley one. Driving position feels like it's a little bit lower and a little bit more natural, so quite a positive first introduction. So the ride is definitely better. The control for the dampers, it's on comfort, so it is maximum sort of comfort, but it's definitely a lot softer than the Bentley. Miles better. It's weird because when these came out, some of the reviews I've read said that the ride was below par. Feels pretty good to me. Maybe it's not as good as the equivalent S-Class at the time, which also used air suspension, but it doesn't feel like it's far off to me. It is miles better than the Bentley, miles better. Having said that, it is already feeling like it's a bit more wallowy. I don't think you're gonna be able to get as much of a sporty feeling out of this, but on top of the suspension, this is also a longer wheelbase, so that will help too. Because the engine is much more muted and the ride is more serene, it does feel like a, focused is the wrong word, but no, it does feel more focused in in true luxury and uh, so far I'm pretty impressed. Let's see what it's like in terms of speed and we'll do our usual pull out of this junction, put it into sport and then go for it. So it's still quite a rapid car, uh, definitely doesn't feel as quick as the Bentley, it does have 100 less horsepower, it weighs more but let's see what happens when we get to some bends here. So first of all, in comfort level, oh, definitely pitches a lot more. So it's now in the sportiest setting and it is controlling body movement a little bit better, but uh, it, it's not a sea change in, in difference of feel. It also has, this has uh, at least an inch smaller wheels. I think they're 18s, they're 19s on my GT. That will also be helping the ride, but this is, you know, the Phaeton is so much more serene. So tight corner there, not the natural habitat for this car and you could feel it. The brakes also don't feel super strong. I'm not sure if that's down to this particular example. It has an amazing 210,000 miles on it. To say the interior is fantastic for that, really quite impressive. Um, but yes, the brakes lack feel, a bit spongy, and don't really feel strong enough. I'll take the Bentley out now and we'll see how it compares, but it really is. If you're in both cars, apart from a little bit of the tone of the engine, you, I don't think you'd say that they were based on the same platform. On startup, immediately very different. The engine is much more present in the Bentley. There's Robert with the Phaeton. He's got some quite interesting VW Group cars, including a Polo 3L and some other bits. Um, I'll put his Instagram up here now to go and have a look at it and maybe follow him. I think that the stiffest setting in the Phaeton is probably the same as Comfort on this. I'm starting off in Comfort and we'll go down the road and see how different it is. You can feel the sort of undulations and the bump, they move the body more. So whilst it doesn't pitch and wave and move around, it's obviously a stiffer setup. It is a shorter wheelbase, and already you can tell immediately that it is a much more sporting car, which I never thought I'd say about the GT. I don't think this is a sporting car normally, it's so heavy. 
but after having driven the Phaeton, it does feel like a bit of a sporty thing. The steering has more precision. The body does move around. The ride isn't bad by any means, but um, it's just quite not as quite as cassetting and you can hear the engine much, much more than on the Phaeton. Okay, so we'll put it in sport and do a drag and see how it compares in terms of outright pace. It's significantly quicker. It's also more responsive. And the six-speed gearbox, much quicker to respond, to kick down, pulls much harder, especially at the top end. One thing I do like about this, and it doesn't have that traditional thing that a lot of turbo engines have, which is just that big slug of torque and then nothing. This just pulls from anything. It's supposed to be peak torque at 1600 RPM. I know it may be a bit silly to say this feels like a more sporting car, but I really didn't know what to expect because the platform is the same. It's obviously also on lower profile wheels, but it's interesting that the steering is heavier. I never thought this was a, a heavy steering system, but compared, <laughs> compared to the Phaeton, it does have a bit of weight to it. It doesn't really add much particular feel though, as far as I can tell. Right. I'm now going to put it in sport. And compared to the VW, it's now really tied down. It's more stable because it's not bumping and moving around so much. And it's quite interesting in the GT how little it reduces comfort if you're going quickly, if you put it into the sports mode. I think because it stops it pitching and rolling, it then, okay, you get the trade-off that the bumps, you can feel the bumps a bit more, but it's, it's, it's really sort of almost worth doing just for that. The Phaeton here showed its, well, its wheelbase, its size and its intended purpose. It really wasn't very good. Brakes are great on this. They have feel. I don't know how long they would last, but if you're driving on the road, the, the brakes feel great. It's controlled. It's sharper in the corners. It feels like a completely different car. That's no slight on the Phaeton, but um, I'm still kind of blown away by how different they feel. How do we sum it up then? I mean, this wasn't ever really going to be a test about which car was better than the other because they have completely different roles. And I think Volkswagen did very well in differentiating these two you wouldn't know that it was the same car underneath unless somebody told you. I think the Phaeton, for me, it's a car I've always liked and it has incredible discretion. I mean, you could be in one of those and nobody would look at it sideways unless it's someone who knew their cars and liked the engineering behind it. The crucial question is, does this feel like double the car in terms of price of being in the car? And I would say, it actually, it does. I wasn't sure if I was going to come to that conclusion before, but dynamically, it's not that one's better than the other. They're just different. Um, this is, for all its bulk and size, they tried to make it sporty. And in comparison to the Phaeton, it definitely is. It also does feel like a, a more quality product from the interior, the way it's trimmed, and on the exterior, the way it looks. The Phaeton always was a crazy idea. It was Ferdinand Piech's brainchild. He did it because Mercedes and BMW started making smaller cars and were competing with VW directly. So it was almost out of spite, but it was always going to be a ridiculous idea. It's going to be a lot easier to try and convince people to buy the cheaper, sort of, sorry, to buy the smaller high-end car than to build a luxury car from a cheapish brand. And it definitely didn't work. The only reason why it survived so long, it's made from 2002 to I think 2015, 16, with a mild facelift in 2011, was because the Chinese hoovered up half the production. They only made about 4,000 a year, so it was a loss leader. I don't really know how to end this test. I really like both of these. It's been great to drive the W12, the Phaeton, and I think a great value now. So if you want a big Luxo barge, get something different, get a Phaeton. 
if you are interested in looking at something which is true British luxury cars of the old age, have a look at this video here with the Lagonda and a Bentley Turbo R. Thank you so much and see you soon.